Hey everyone, welcome to the top 10. Let's welcome to my top 10 things to watch on Disney Plus. Uh, I had to really, I had to make, yeah, I had to make this title pretty literal and stuff because I was gonna call it the best things to watch, but these aren't necessarily the best things to watch on Disney Plus. These are just recommendations for people to, these are just recommendations for movies and TV shows that I think people should just give it a shot and stuff. Some of these are movies, Slash TV shows, a lot of people have seen, but I think these are just important to watch during, right now, during the Christmas season, during Star Wars season, or just during the Disney season in general, which is every day, apparently, and yeah. I know everyone has subscribed to Disney Plus, pretty much. It's like the new Netflix and everything, and as much as I was against Disney Plus, there was some great fucking shit on it, and I thought I'd throw out some recommendations to people. If you're, like, curious, there's, like, some Disney shows or movies you haven't seen yet, these are the shows slash movies I personally would recommend for people to watch, whether they're kids, adults, for the whole family. I think people should just watch this and put it on their watch list for Disney+. Plus. And as always, for our top 10 list, you gotta have your honorable mentions. My honorable mentions are Recess, the TV show, uh, Tron, uh, the Clone Wars TV series, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, uh, DuckTales, both the original show and the new one, Sky High, and the Santa Claus, because it is Christmas. All great shows slash movies just gonna be the top ten list, but to be my top ten is my number ten. My number ten is Star Wars Rebels. Rebels, um, you know, cause Star Wars. Uh, we're getting a new Star Wars movie in a couple weeks. There's a new Star Wars video game, Fallen Order, which is a fucking great game and stuff. So, a, we're in the Star Wars season. So I feel like if you haven't watched a Star Wars show, uh, it, I recommend this because it's a really great show. It talks a lot about new characters, interesting ideas, better world, or a really great world world building and stuff, and it talks about stories that you didn't know about, and then there's like still leftover stories from Clone Wars that make its way into Rebels, and backstories of certain characters from Rogue One that are in Rebels and stuff, and it's got great animation, great action, and it explores the mythos of the Jedi Knights in an interesting and fascinating way. And you also got like Grandma Tarkin in it, you got Darth Vader in there, you got Saga Rara, you got Ahsoka Tatana, like there's a lot of great characters and it has a lot of emotion, has a lot of depth to it and the main characters and the whole crew you actually give a fuck, you actually give a shit about these characters and it's very hard to do that when you, when you make a show like this, there's bound to be a character you hate but when it comes to this show, they're all very likable, they're all very enjoyable to watch, and it's just a great Star Wars TV show, and if you haven't watched this yet, and you're a Star Wars fan, check it out. Code number nine is Gargoyles. Gargoyles is a terrific television show. This aired on the Disney afternoon in the 90s, and I know a lot of people haven't seen it. Pretty much people that are around my age group or older have seen Gargoyles. This is like a show for like people in their late 20s or early 30s, or even late 30s, fuck. Uh, a lot of people have seen it through the older generation, uh, mostly the like you know late millennials or young Gen X people, but a lot of the young people haven't seen Gargoyles, and they need to. This is a terrific cartoon. It's dark, it's got great, great philosophical stuff, great philosophical ideas, it's got fantastic characters, it's got a lot of good jokes, it just, it's just enjoyable. It's engaging, and it, like, it grabs your attention from the very first episode. The first episode is almost like a movie. It's like the first seven episodes is like a big movie itself. And it's really great. You love these characters. You love its visuals. And you love its dark style. And just all around fantastic show. If you like cool, fantasy cartoons, then you'll love this one. Coming in number eight is The Rocketeer. The Rocketeer is another old school Disney movie that a lot of people still need to see. No one saw it when it came out. I got this like cult following throughout like the late 90s and early 2000s. And even now... But still, a lot of people haven't seen The Rocketeer, and it's great, because it's started by Joe Johnson, the guy who did Captain America vs. Avenger. You could tell, you, you tell this guy did Captain America. The way he made Captain America is exactly how he made The Rocketeer in the 80s. It's very, like, it's almost like a serial, uh, a serial box, like, superhero comic book movie. It's really cool, very adventurous, very fun, and just... It's about a guy, and he has a jetpack, and he's fighting Nazis and shit. Like, it's like, it doesn't get any cool in this. It's very Indiana Jones meets Captain America-esque, and it's really fun. Uh, I, I love this movie. I think it's just a fun, timeless film. Some of its visuals are a little dated, but... Come on, you got Timothy Dalton as a Nazi actor. It's great. 
And I even love um, Billy Campbell. He's great as uh, Rick Secord and Alan Arkin's in it. Just, I love everything about uh, The Rocketeer. It's such a great film. <laughs> Coming number seven is Eight Below. Eight Below is a very underrated Disney film, and that's why I'm recommending it, because this is a great movie for the whole family to watch. And it's a very sad movie, and again, pe more people need to watch it, because every time I talk about this movie, a lot of people don't know what this movie is, and it sucks. It, it's got Paul Walker. It's probably the best movie Paul Walker has been in, because, rest in peace, Paul Walker, I, I never thought Paul Walker was an amazing actor. I like, like, Joyride, and I liked Varsity Blues, and, uh, I liked one or two Fast and Furious movies, but I was never a huge Paul Walker fan. Running Scare was kind of good, too, but this is his best movie. I think it's his best performance, and I think it just has the more heart. It's literally about him, and they live up in Alaska, and... He has these eight sled dogs that are basically his family. He has no family. Those dogs are his family. But when a storm happens, he gets sick with a guy he works for. They all get sick. And they have to be escorted out. And they have to leave the dogs behind in the snowstorm. And when the storm clears, they can get their dogs. But then they realize the storm isn't going to clear. And they have to wait a whole year to get the dogs back. But he chained them up. And he basically thinks the dogs are dead. And the story is through Paul Walker's eyes when him trying to get his dogs back. And it's also through the point of view of the eight sled dogs and how they survive in the cold. How do they get their food? How do they survive against all these creatures in Alaska and stuff? It is a really enjoyable film. It's a very intense film. It's very cute, but it's also incredibly sad. And it's just, it's a fascinating story. And just more people need to watch it. It's a great movie for the whole family. Coming number six is The Rescuers Down Under. The Rescuers Down Under is another underrated classic Disney movie, and no one's seen it, but I think they have now because Disney Plus and shit, but people need to watch Rescuers Down Under. You don't need to watch the first Rescuers. Fuck that movie. It's a great movie, but you don't need to watch that shit. This one is the true uh, Rescuers film. I wish they made a third one, but both of them didn't really make a shit ton of money. Rescuers Down Under has a great film, by uh, Dorsey Scott. It follows two mice, uh, Bernard and Bianca, and they basically are finding this bird and they're trying to find this child who's captured by his poacher and stuff, and really great. This is a just fantastic adventure story. It's big, it's grand, it's epic, it's just, it sweeps with animation, it just sweeps off the screen, it's just so beautiful, it's engaging, it's thrilling, it's just a fantastic, fun adventure story. That's all it is. It's nothing like profound or anything. It's just a fun adventure story, and everyone needs to watch it. It's great. <laughs> Coming number five is The Simpsons. Yes. The Simpsons is one of my favorite shows of all time. Uh, seasons one to like 12 is fucking amazing. Fuck the rest of it, but The Simpsons is great. And I love it because Disney bought Fox, so a lot of Fox stuff is on. Uh, Disney Plus, and Simpsons. Uh, if you've not watched The Simpsons, watch it. That's all I gotta say. Like, it's The Simpsons. Uh, how do I explain The Simpsons? Like, everyone knows The Simpsons. It's part of our culture, The Simpsons. Like, come on now. This is, like, just some of the greatest comedy on television. It's right up there with, like, Friends and Seinfeld as some of the greatest comedy I've ever heard on television, The Simpsons. It's got great commentary, great characters, great jokes, just phenomenal episodes. Holy shit. Like, watch episodes, like, if you want, like, rec recommendations for episodes, watch Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 1 and 2, watch uh, Homer vs. the Monorail, Cape Fear, um, all the Treehouse of Horrors, all of them are great, even the new ones, really great, uh, and the submarine episode when Homer is on the submarine. Like, those are the best episodes of The Simpsons, in my opinion. And, yeah, just go watch The Simpsons, come on now. Coming number four is Boy Meets World. Yes, this is a very odd one. Uh, I've been watching some Boy Meets World, actually, because of Disney+, Plus. So I've been getting back into it. This is a show I grew up on. And it's funny, because I grew up on a lot of classic shows in the 90s. This is a classic show of the 90s, because it came out in the late 90s. And this is more of the cheesy shows I watched as a kid, and even an early teenager. And I still think it kind of holds up. I just... Maybe it's because it's got nostalgia, but I actually think it has good themes and good characters that still stand the test of time. I did watch its, uh, its, uh, sequel television show, Girl Meets World, and it's not very good. And even though it's some of the same characters, it's not very good. Boy Meets World still holds up. I still think the first, like, five seasons are great. I, I think the last two seasons kind of, like, 
dwindle for me, except the last episode. What a great finale, but I think it's a great show. I think I love... I think Eric is the best character. Well, Freddy, I, he did a lot of great shit in the 90s. Like, he did Kim Possible, he did uh, Batman Beyond, and he did Boy Meets World. Like, he just did a lot of good stuff. That's why I love Will Freddy. And I just really like Boy Meets World. I love the characters of Corey and Sean. What a great friendship. Topanga, Mr. Feeney. I just love all these characters. And just, it's childhood for me. Coming number three is Fantasia. Fantasia is a film everyone needs to watch. This is just... This is what beautiful music, this is like, this is music played to visual storytelling. It is not, it's not linear storytelling, it is just straight abstract imagery telling the story through its animation and through all this classic uh, orchestra music and it's beautiful, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, you can just watch it with your eyes closed and just watch the beautiful music but you, you're missing out on the spectacular animation and some of the greatest musicians uh, did all the orchestra for this music because it's a classic music from like the 18th century. You got, you got Bach, you got Beethoven, Mozart and stuff. Uh, Tchaikovsky, like you got a lot of stuff in this and great moments. Sorcerer's Apprentice is one of my favorites. Uh, Night of Bull Mountain is great and even the, the opening scene when how they describe what music would look like it through animation is just beautiful. Everything about Fantasia is just an awe. Just, it's all wondering. It's just so good and I know a lot of people have not seen it, and I think you should show your kids, and if you're an adult, you should watch it. It's a, it's a classic. Coming to number two is the reason I got Disney Plus in the first place, and that's The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian is the reason why I got Disney Plus, and it's not let me down. Like, it's so good. Uh, it's four episodes I've watched, all great. Don't want to spoil it, but Pedro Pascal is great as The Mandalorian. The Baby Yoda in him is such a great... Great chemistry, great camaraderie, this father-son relationship, I fucking love it, I fucking adore it. I'm waiting for Bill Burr to get in here, because I love Bill Burr, I know he's coming soon, so I I hope it's the next episode, but anyways, Mandalorian's the reason why I got Disney+, Plus. so thank you Disney+, Plus. uh, well, Disney+, Plus should be thanking the Mandalorian for getting me onto this, you know, service. Next. <laughs> And the number one thing you should watch on Disney Plus, it's a gimme, it's obvious, it's the Star Wars trilogy, the original Star Wars trilogy. It looks beautiful, it's still the Blu-ray copies, but it's in 4K, it looks fantastic. And again, it, everyone's in a Star Wars mood right now because of the video game Fallen Order and Rise of Skywalker's coming out and shit like that. So, what do you do in your Star Wars mood? Well, watch the best Star Wars movies, Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back Return of the Jedi. They're on Disney Plus right now, if you don't have the Blu-rays or the DVDs, Watch it on Disney Plus and get blown away by one of the easiest, one of the greatest uh, movie trilogies of all time. Don't need to talk about it. I've talked about it enough. It's Star Wars trilogy. That is the thing you should be watching right now on Disney Plus. So yeah, that was my top 10 things to watch on Disney Plus. So in the comments section below, please tell me what are the things that you think people should watch? What are some things that people should put on their watch list on Disney Plus? Give me your suggestions, give me your comments, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and join the dark side.